Tonight on The Hideout, we have a very wonderful show. We're going to be talking about the legend that is Sting. Co-contributor Dave Beaudry will be with me tonight. And all I have to say, folks, is it's showtime! My name is Jason Bailey. Welcome to The Hideout. And I have a wonderful guest on, which you should already be acquainted with. And his name is Dave. How you doing? Hi, Dave. Uh, Dave is the uh, resident in-house uber fan of everything wrestling and uh, the guy that I talk more wrestling with than anybody else because he's the only one that understands my brand of insanity when it comes to this subject. Um, today we are going to be talking about the legend that is Sting. I'm not talking about the adult contemporary artist. I am talking oh, about... that would be badass. If Sting was in a wrestling match with Phil Collins in a yes. cage? Yes. That'd be awesome. Brought to you by Atlantic Records. At any rate, um, we're going to be talking about the legend that is Sting. and AKA uh, Steve Borden. Steve Borden. And uh, the current affairs with uh, WWE possible. Because it is that time of year again. Where we all have the Sting rumors, but sometimes something about this seems like it might be true this time. A little more uh, confirmation going on. But at any rate... Dave, start us off. What is the current situation that we're now hearing the current rumors about Sting, a.k.a. Steve Borden? The rumor being that Sting has not yet signed a deal with WWE, but one is pretty much imminent. And here's the reason that he's so important to the brand right now. They're launching the <clears throat> WWE Network uh, later this month. Sting is the one guy, I think. Tell me if you can think of somebody else. Like well, I'm going to get into it, but I know what you're major saying. Major name of the last 20 years, 30 years maybe, that they have never been able to sign. And they've tried multiple times, and for various reasons, uh, which we can also get into, Sting has always said no. Sting's an older guy now. His contract with TNA is up. He's out of the company. And he it's now or never and they want him for the wwe network they want him as a representative of wcw because he was one of the biggest names that they ever had there um they also want him to a legends contract they want him for the hall of fame they want dvds <clears throat> they want the sting brand while it still has value um and sting is smart enough to realize that you know in the twilight 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 of his career that if anybody is going to take care of that legacy, it's going to be Vince McMahon. Right. Um, I guess, yeah, that's exactly what I want to talk about today, is the fact that Sting, literally, I mean, I, and, I, and you and me collectively, yeah, we know just about it. it we're insane. We're like insane. We know like stadiums and dates. We're, we're insane. We just have very limited lives. We, we really do. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is that, as far as I know, the only major professional wrestler in the last 20 years, like you said, uh, my God, almost 30 yeah. now, uh, that has not Since ever 85. been signed by the WWF slash E, Vince McMahon. Uh, I mean, the most, the most major star that's never been on any contract with that company, with with the major company, yeah. I don't know of any other entity, any other wrestler. I just don't. No, I can't think of anybody. And Sting has an established brand that is valuable. That was done completely outside of WWE and That's outside right. of the McMahon. And it survived NWA, WCW, and TNA. TNA. Survived TNA. Matter of fact, we're talking about brands and we're talking about merchandise. Dave, show us something right now. Yes, this is this is vintage vintage ninety seven right here. I got the show. Oh my there god! Is. There it 1997 is. Nineteen ninety seven Stinger shirt, baby. It was actually it was the first uh, it was the first pay per view of I'd ever gone to live it was World War Three in ninety seven. Oh, World got, War Three! It was an awful event. Sting did not even really even appear there, but his shirt was on sale. And uh, the rest is and, and the rest Dave is has brought it to the attention it out of, of millions tonight. It looks great. This is when he was going through the whole crow thing, right? Yes, which yeah. I think is what they need to return to. Yeah, we'll this, to the well. whole the whole deal. Um, this is my thing with Sting. Uh, you know, I, I have to admit, and I hope you're not disappointed in me and, and, and get all uh, bitch slappy on me. But uh, I was never a Sting fan. I'm sorry. 
I just, I just wasn't. I couldn't get into his character in no matter what uh, persona he carried through. The the first thing that he came in with was, I'm a good old wrestler and I'm awesome. You he is a good wrestler. You didn't love him when he was tagging with Warrior back in the day? No. The and that's Blade a whole other thing. The Blade Runners, no. Uh, back in Texas, right? Or the All-American. There, there was something else before that, like the All-Americans. Yeah. Which, uh, oh, wait, and, you know, and we can get into that, but I never was... A humongous Sting fan. Matter of fact, I wasn't even. Remember, if Sting was facing someone, chances are very high Jason wanted to see Sting lose. The very first, even with Hollywood Hogan, the very first major wrestling event that I can recall seeing was something that because I never saw it when I was younger because my my parents hated it. So therefore, I just they hated wrestling. Oh, they hate it to this day. Or my, you know, my dad. See, does, this but. is why you're such a fan. Yeah, right? Rebellion. It's rebellion against your parents. A friend of my dad's we got to get into over, this later. A friend of my dad's brought over uh, the Great American Bash 89. That was okay. the first major event that I'd ever seen. And there were two matches that stood out on that card. One was Ric Flair versus Terry Funk in the main event. Of but course. But the other one was for the TV title where it was Sting <clears throat> defending against the Great Muda. And those guys had a hell of a feud. And that was really the, the Great first. Great Muda could wrestle. That was, oh, it's one of the best ever, yeah. I think. Um, and it's one of the, uh, that was the beginning of that feud that went on for months. So I saw that and just like loved it. Yeah. So then later when Sting went into the feud with Flair and from then on, like he was never, I was never like, he was never like my, you know, absolute tippity top, like favorite dude, but I mean, he could put on a hell of a show. Okay. And Sting was a main eventer from 80, what, 7, 88 on. It was 88 when Flair, <coughs> when Sting and Flair had the, the 45 minute drawn clash of the champions on TBS. Which stole the thunder from the WrestleMania that they were going against. It was WrestleMania night. 4. I think WrestleMania 4. Yeah. 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 And that was free. So people, a lot more people saw Sting versus Flair. And credit to the, Flair, because Sting was still very green at that time. He wasn't, he would get better in the ring as time went on. And he did. Um, yeah. But he, he was an incredible athlete. He was charismatic. He hadn't really, he was never been the best at the microphone, but he could do an interview. He could get yeah. his point across, and he was he was distinctive. You remembered him. Yeah. The thing that has separated Sting, though, from other stars of his era is Sting has been able, better than almost anybody, to adapt as time has gone on. As he's gotten older, he shifted his style. Muda has done this in Japan, but we're talking strictly kind of America. Um, but uh, he's also shifted his character as times have gone gone on. There's been various incarnations of Sting yes. that have all been incredibly successful. And it all depends, like, which Sting are they really going to try to highlight? Right. I have an opinion on that, but what, yeah. do you, what are your thoughts? Sting comes in tomorrow... Which Sting are you going with as far as what he can do now? How do you characterize him? I don't know. I, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, they, they there's actually been where fans get together and they're like, what are the best years for storytelling with a particular uh, character? Because wrestlers okay. are the finest form of method acting. They literally are their character. They are, the character and the performer are the same person. Well, especially in the 70s and the 80s. Well, 80s and before. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that still sort of pertains when you're, when you're meeting, a, uh, like when you meet Ric Flair and you shake his hand, you're mean Ric Flair the performer, but you're sure. mean Ric Flair the character. So right. you know what I mean? Um, I'm a big fan of, if he comes to WWE now, yeah. <laughs> don't hide the fact that he's older. Don't right. hide that. Because in a, in a storytelling capacity, which they are storytellers, you've seen professional wrestlers are actors right. and stuntmen all rolled into the same person. Some better actors than others. Absolutely. And some better stuntmen than others. Absolutely. Mick Foley. Um, but the thing is that ultimately, don't hide his age. Sting is certainly slower than he used to be. Not as agile. He can't do a lot of the stuff that he used to be able to do. And of course, he, why should he? He's 55 years old. Um, he does still have a sense of timing. He knows when to do certain things to kind of maximize its effect. Um, if he's in there with a guy who can kind of, you know, maximize his offense, bump around for him, and kind of make what he looks. And Sting is still willing to bump. He, you know, he took a, you know his last match with Magnus or whatever the hell it was. He took like a superplex off the top rope. Okay. He's, he's still taking bumps. He's still falling down. Gotcha. Um, you know, he's still he's still working as hard as he can. He doesn't look like he's, he doesn't seem like he's lazy. Um, but as no. far as how you package him, uh, I personally think you go with the mystique of the Sting character. That, okay. Um, you lose the t-shirt, <laughs> for one. So more like the, that crow thing yes. that he was doing back when he was selling this stuff here. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Because here's one rumor that I've heard that they want to use Sting for is that there's right now there's no talk of Sting at WrestleMania unless he debuts there. 
Um, the match that Sting wants to have eventually, and that Undertaker wants to have, is that they want to wrestle each other because of does the take, Hold on, does Taker want to wrestle my, Sting? My understanding is yes. Really? Whether he feels that way now, I don't know. Okay. But as of a few years ago, <laughs> He yes, kind of did? Okay. Absolutely. It's been talked about multiple times. Wow. Sting almost signed like two or three years ago. It was very close, and it would have been probably a WrestleMania match with Taker. Yeah. Um, and just from a character... And Sting has said, from a character standpoint, that's the one guy that he wants to lock up with that he hasn't right um well sting, you better do it soon sting so well here's the thing they're not going to redo all the like WrestleMania 20 years plans. left on the planet for christ's sake they're not going to redo the wrestlemania plans no uh, so there's no real chance of that happening but what you could do if taker's in good enough physical shape for it and sting's in shape for it is you could build a something maybe for summers okay you have sting coming in he's a brand name you're going to put him in at least a few marquee matches over the next year, probably give him a Hall of Fame induction, whatever. Who do you book him with, and how the hell do you make that work? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, unless you're, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Because okay. the thing is, the ultimate thing is, you've got a legend. Does he lay down for somebody after all these years? Does Sting come into WWE and he fucking, you know, does the honors and he lay, or does somebody else lay down for him? I think, here's the thing. I think Sting is willing <coughs> to, if it's under the, like, Sting is not known for being. He's a good guy. From Everyone a says standpoint. that Steve Borden is one of the most professional, best people in wrestling. And, and he had to deal with some ridiculously unprofessional shit. He had to deal with the whole, when Jeff Hardy came to the ring all high as a kite in TNA and Sting had to pin him well, and I mean, just look, to get him out of the ring. What's, like, what's amazing is look at all the, the incarnations of wrestling he has had to go through sure. from NWA to WCW and the multiple presidents of WCW they had. He's a survivor and he he's survived a bad survivor. booking. He survived he's, ridiculous stories lines that made no sense he's you and know, you know what's matter he's he stayed good. above the fray of controversy yeah. for decades he never talked shit about anybody he never talked shit about that. anybody and nobody talked shit about sting no nobody has anything bad to say about the man or the performer which is one of the reasons another reason why the wwe has maintained interest in him because even when he hasn't signed he said himself like he and mcmahon have always had very good conversations yeah. And he's like, they've always been very good to me. It just wasn't the right time. I didn't like the creative, you know, whatever. Yeah. Now, Sting was never going to sign during the Attitude Era because he didn't like the, the more the sexually product. explicit mm -hmm. storylines, whatever. Yeah, he's yeah, born yeah. in Christian for I don't know how many years now. You know, he has very strong personal convictions of things that he doesn't want to be associated with. Yeah. That's no longer a problem because WWE went PG, like, I don't know. But also, Shawn Michaels is that way, too. Sure. And they worked around that. Yeah, absolutely. So that can be done. <laughs> but... Um, Here's the, the interesting thing. Sting said well, there's a key moment that played into why he never signed. Um, it was shortly, it was when they started the WCW invasion. Because uh, Sting's contract was one, when they bought WCW, they did, Sting's contract did not go with it. They had to get Sting separately. Uh, so they had all these talks and stuff, and Sting was just like, I just don't know how, he didn't trust them to use him properly. Use the character. And then what happened was he was watching TV and Booker T made his debut on Raw or something. And there was some big pull-apart brawl where Booker's fighting on one side of the ring, The Rock is fighting on some other. And then they're fighting, they're fighting, clearing out. They, they go back to back, they turn around and look at each other. There's this big moment, the WCW guy, the WWE guy. And then Rock looked at him and was like, who are you? Right. And Sting said in that moment, I, I couldn't do it. There's like, right. because... Uh, he's like they in that that one single instant they buried him strictly because he was a WCW guy and it was going to take Booker years to come back from that. Yeah, uh, and which he's like which he did because Booker's talented. Yeah, and yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. He was very talented. But he's and Sting did not want that to be him. Now the difference is because Sting is at the very end of the run. Um, I of his life. No, I don't. Th I don't think Vince is, would have Sting come out and job to Heath Slater. I don't think they're going to put Sting in a situation where he looks foolish. And I think Sting has more confidence in that now than he did 10 years ago. Sure. And plus, you could probably put that in a contract. I heard that the, he pro probably is going to sign a Legends contract. I think that Sting is just like every person in any professional endeavor gets to the point that they start looking at their legacy. Uh -huh. And ultimately, and he should. And he he should archives. That's right. Ultimately, Vince owns more of Sting's life, professional life on video, yeah. than any other than anybody. TNA doesn't even it doesn't even matter. 
So Vince already owns all his matches. He and just is been, owning current content. He doesn't own anything that he can do right now. And they, they actually, and Sting's already been making money because anytime they put him on a DVD release, he's got to be getting a check from that. I hope so. Uh, you think so? Yeah, I'd have to. Um, so they've been very kind to Sting with their use of the archives. Like even when he's been with TNA, they've always spoken very highly of him. They've never. You know, snuck a dig in on him no. on air or there's anything not, like that. There's not, there's not been a self destruction of Sting. Sting, DVD. yeah. All right, Dave. Well, we're gonna wrap it up now. Thank you very much for your insight. Anytime you're on, we know we're gonna have some intelligent, real conversation about the only sport that really matters. I'm an MMA fan personally. I wouldn't say it's the only sport that matters. It's the only sport that matters. So anyway, thank Bullshit. you for tuning in, and we'll see you again later here at the Hideout. Hello, and welcome back to The Hideout. My name is Jason Bailey, and this is... Dave, I wasn't ready. Are you ready now? Hold on, one second. Oh my god, take a moment, okay. Dave. Go ahead. Thank you. You're perfect now.